Then we had a Finn Balor promo package. And honest to God, I thought this was one of the best video packages they've done in years. I thought this was so great. Finn is there, and he explains that the old Finn Balor is dead, and the new one is much worse. And he says Seth injured him years ago, and even though he injured him in that match, and he rattles off all of the injuries he suffered in that match, he said, I still beat you. But he says, that's not even the issue. I gave up the title, and at the lowest point in my life, you walked out and you laughed in my face. And they've got footage of all of this. It's Seth coming out, and he's laughing, and poor Finn standing there in tears because he had to vacate the title. And he says, that is something I'll never forget. You say I got bitter. I didn't get bitter. You made me bitter. That bitterness is all I have. They love you, your stupid outfits, your stupid song. Well, none of that matters to me. All that matters is vengeance and the world title. On Sunday, I'm going to take everything back. And the only song that the fans are going to sing is the ringing in your ears, as I'm pronounced world heavyweight champion. And that is going to be a bitter pill for you to swallow. Finn was awesome in this video package. This was great. Mm -hmm. And Seth came out for a promo. And he points out Carmelo Hayes there in the front row. And the crowd chants NXT. And Seth thanked him for having his back on Tuesday and wished him luck against Corbin this coming Tuesday. And he said that uh, he wanted to know which Finn was going to show up. And he found out last week when Finn jumped him and he dared him to come out and finish the job right now. So, of course, there's no Finn Balor. So he continues cutting this promo about Sunday. He said the best version of Finn couldn't beat the best version of Seth Rollins. And that would be a bitter pill to swallow. So then Finn does hit the ring. They have a big brawl. Finn goes for the bad ribs. He goes outside. He goes for a chair. But Carmella grabs a chair from him. Gives Seth the chance to make a comeback. Finn bails into the crowd. And uh, I am very much looking forward to this match on Saturday. Well, they'll have a Probably match. more so than anything else on the show by far, I would say. Well, I would say I'm looking forward to the tag match because I think that that will, you know, there's a storyline there and everything like that. Or I mean, Seth and, and, uh, and Finn Balor will probably have a great wrestling match. But, um, I mean, we've seen it many times. You know, this other thing is something new. Chomper did a promo talking about why he attacked The Miz. He was gone nine months with a hip injury, and Miz didn't call him. He didn't text him. No contact whatsoever. And he said the injury was a blessing in disguise. He was no longer affiliated with Miz and was going to create his own opportunities. So they announced Chomper versus Miz, but Miz jumped him at the bell, beat him all over the place, gave him the skull-crushing finale on the outside. No match. Uh, just further building up that feud. Yeah. Notice uh, Chomper uh, dyed his beard. Did he? I did not notice. Yeah, well, that's uh, another sign of Vince McMahon. You know, Vince well, hates yeah. gray. Vince hates gray. And uh, Ciampa came back with gray beard, you know, like he usually has, and uh, dyed it, yeah. Well, we had Gunther and Kaiser having a meeting backstage, and they're talking about Riddle, and Sammy and Kevin showed up. And uh, they get into this big argument, and Kaiser wants to know what they're going to do about it. It says, don't make Gunther teach you the lesson that he taught Kevin a few weeks ago. And Kevin says, Gunther didn't teach me anything. I learned nothing in that match. And Sammy says, all right, well, it took three of you to beat him. So, Gunther, how about we go one-on-one -on -one tonight? And Gunther said, fine, be my guest. And if you're thinking, was it really one-on-one, -on -one? the answer, of course, is no. No. That's another story. Dom faced Akira Tozawa. The match went a minute 30. Akira Tozawa was so awesome in this one minute and 30 seconds but he got uh, distracted by Rhea. Dom hit the uh, frog splash and pinned him. So just uh, nothing happening deal. We had a Viking Raiders promo and then a Women's Money in the Bank Summit. And essentially all the women are out there. They're all yelling back and forth at each other. And finally Trish buries Becky, so Becky punches her in the face. We get a giant brawl breaking out. Io and Becky are the last two in the ring, but Io ends up doing an acai moonsault out of the crowd outside. And then Becky climbs up, she grabs the briefcase, she celebrates, and that is your women's Money in the Bank build. It was all right, but uh, that's pretty much all I can say about that. The, the big thing they're pushing is that Becky has never won the Money in the Bank. She's won everything else but that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Bailey's all over this thing doing promos, and they were supposed to do a Bailey versus Shotzi match where Shotzi could win Bailey's spot in the ladder match, and they just never did it. 
No, and uh, I don't know if they're going to do it either because they certainly weren't, you know, teasing that they on didn't, the show. They didn't. They, they didn't. They didn't mention it at all. And just um, dropped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's one of the things Vince canceled. I mean, they were going to do it as late as the day of the show on Friday. Carmelo did a promo backstage, talked about the match with Finn coming up tonight, and he put over Seth Rollins wants to be a guy just like him, and he said tonight he's not going to miss. And he did. And, well, he missed, yes. Yes. Mello did miss. That's true. Then we had the Becky segment we talked about earlier. Then Sammy and Gunther with Kevin Owens on commentary. I, I thought this match was, for 12 minutes, I thought it was great. Just uh, Gunther just crushing this guy. He chopped the absolute hell out of him. And then I, Sammy I makes. I, I, just, I just did not like the finish at all. I just thought it was so predictable. Um, you know, um, it's like. You know, you you do a whole thing, and the whole thing is just like, oh, it takes three to win, it takes three to win, and then you do the match, and it's the exact same thing that you've always that you've already seen. I mean, well, I mean, that's, it, that's it, the it, heat. It, yeah, it's a good match, but uh, I, I too, it's repetitive though. It's, it's been done over and over and over again. I mean, how much heat do you get when it's the same thing that you've always, that you've done fifteen times? Well, the one difference here is that uh, there was no Vinci, but then he came out well, he near the there. end of the match. Well, he yeah. came out near the end. He didn't come out at the beginning. Comes yeah. out near the end, and he's on crutches, so he's selling that he's still injured. But then, of course, he grabs the crutch, and he whacks Sammy with it. Gunther power bombs him straight to hell, pins him. And then the uh, heels are beating down the baby face afterwards. Riddle runs down to the ring limping, kills all of Imperium with crutch shots, and then Kevin gives Kaiser a stunner for good measure. I like this segment a lot. I thought it was really good. Finish I could have done without, but, I mean, the match itself. I mean, the match is great. Then, uh, then we had... So Finn Balor starts coming down to the ring. He gets in the ring for his match. Then I think they went to a commercial. Then they come back, and he's still in the ring. Then they go to Chad Gable in the gym with Maxine and Otis. And Maxine talks about she's beating Val Hall up every week, and Chad challenges them for next week. Then they cut in uh, backstage to Natty doing a promo, and Natty is doing a promo with Rhea, or about Rhea, and she wants her next week, yeah, woman to woman. Next week. Yeah. And then they cut back, and Finn Balor's still in the ring. He's been in the ring for like 15 minutes at this point. And so finally they bring out Carmelo Hayes, and so they have a good match, 10 minutes, but then, believe it or not, you know, Finn cuts him off. He hits a drop kick in the corner. He goes up top. He hits the coup de gras, and he pins the NXT champion clean in the middle of the ring. The night before, Carmelo is supposed to go defend the title against Baron Corbin in the main event of an NXT show. I mean, I was stunned, but I wasn't stunned. It was like, well, you know, this I mean, is, I knew, this is I mean, right out of the Vince playbook. It happens I mean, every I mean, single time. I mean, Finn is going for the for the championship on the pay-per-view. Yeah, so, so there's a million guys won. he could beat. But they, exactly he doesn't need it. to beat the NXT champion, for the right. love of God. There's a huge right. roster here of guys he could beat. I know, I know. That's that's the that's exactly what I was going to say. It's like there's a whole bunch of people you could beat, and all it did was tell everyone that this is a secondary title. It's a secondary guy. I mean, Dude, it wasn't it's, even... it's a fourth-place title because we got Roman as the, the one and two belts, well, and then even, Seth has got the bronze medal, it's and not so this even, guy it, here is not even in the top three. It's not even that because if Finn Balor would have faced, let's say, Cody Rhodes with no belt, who has no belt, right? Even if it was right now Finn should beat him, he ain't beating him clean. He ain't beating him with, like, a uh, you know, no, drop kick not. in the corner and double foot stomp. You know, if he was facing Kevin Owens or Sami Zayn, he should beat him. He ain't going to beat him with a drop kick in the corner or Matt Riddle. You know, I mean, actually, he might beat Matt Riddle clean. But but the other ones, he wouldn't even beat clean. So it's like Carmelo Hayes is, like, so far down the list that he's, like, Gargano Ciampa level. Oh, you know, he gets a little bit of offense and has a decent match, and then he loses to, the re you know, the main event guy. You know, I mean, that's what Hayes was. He was a plucky mid-card to low-card babyface. And the NXT champion, you know, should be a champion at least close to competitive with that. You know, I mean, I mean, but to protect the title, he shouldn't have lost at all. But the fact that not only did he lose, I did expect him to lose, but I did not expect it to be, you know, with getting... You know, I mean, it's not like he got a bunch of near falls or anything like that. I mean, he was just kind of in the match, and then he got beat. 
you know, with no no special excitement. The match was just there. You know, it was no great heat, no great anything. It was just there, and then he got pinned clean. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of heat, but, I mean, I will say, you know, they didn't really see Carmelo as that big a star, but he did a couple of cool things. He did a he Piscato. Did cool he did a springboard into a DDT, and the people did get into those spots. So, I mean, the guy can get over, but he ain't going to get over going in there and losing in 10 minutes in his debut to, to Finn Balor. It's not even It's not even that. He's the NXT champion. He should be protected. And we had a Cody promo saying we'd see what Dom had at Money in the Bank. And then the main event was Cody and Damian Priest, and it was 15 minutes. And uh, good match. Uh, Dom was out there with Rhea, and uh, they did a near fall at the end where Rhea took the ref. Dom tripped up Cody. Priest hit the south of heaven, which is his finish. But Cody kicked out, and then he ended up bumping Dom off the apron. He hit the Cody cutter, hit the crossroads, got the pin. And then uh, Dom very quickly jumped him after the match and went running for his life again. And uh, and that was pretty much the end of the show. I mean, it was very by the numbers. These are the matches. You know what they are. Here's a couple of things to further build them, put heat on people, that sort of thing. But uh, was it a blowaway raw? No, it was. It was not. But it was, uh, it was just a show. It was just filling. It's just filling three hours. I'm at a Father's Day retreat. We were going to go camping today, but uh, suffice to say, the weather was not. Uh, suitable for camping with these two youngsters. And so we rented this cabin here instead. Bug. God damn it. Eat it. Sorry. Eat it. I'm going to eat it. That happened last time. I swallowed a bug. I hope God. it was a big one. Ah. Mm. My wife is asking what happened. And, and I you ate explain. a bug. Come on in, Pace. Why don't you come say hi to everybody? What is all over your face? Oh, my God. That's my child. Hey, Hannah, come in here. Say hi to everybody. You got s'mores all over your face, kid? Why don't you come over here and say hi? What do you want to say? No. Yeah, I don't know. Either. Get out of here. All right. Well, that was fun. Hey, listen, we're going to be back on Tuesday. NWA TNA episode one. Right, Hana? Mm. <laughs> She's acting like a child. All right. Well, that's it, everybody. Yes, face? Uh-oh. Okay, get out of here. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.